Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics with another fun DIY video. This is part one of the Country Kitchen series where we show you just how to make adorable but useful accessories for your home. Now look at these aprons behind me. I know aprons are really in style right now um, and what we used here was Ambleside by Brenda Riddle for Moda Fabrics and aren't these colors just fantastic? There's several colorways to choose from. So let me show you how to make an apron you'll need three fat quarters. So isn't that great? With just three fat quarters, you'll have an adorable apron for yourself or for gift giving. If somebody has maybe a new home, what a great uh, housewarming gift that would be. So for the, the body of the apron, you'll cut your first fat quarter to 16 by 21. You'll have a small strip left over. You can put that off to the side. You won't be needing that. For the pocket and for the ruffle, you'll be using a second fat quarter. The pocket will be cut to nine and a half by 14, and the ruffles will be cut to three and a half by 18. For your third fat quarter, this is for your ties, and this is where you'll have an option. For the aprons that you see behind me, we use just three of the um, strips for the ties, but if you want a longer tie, you can simply cut more strips. And there's enough in the fat quarter to actually cut five strips. We cut three, each of those to three and a half by 21. So now that you've got everything cut, let's go ahead and get started and learn how you can make your own cute apron. So let's put aside everything for now, except for the apron body. So let's get that out. And the first thing that we will do is let's turn it so that the long side is at the top. So that's basically, you see how you're looking at, at the, the apron. Now, notice there's two styles. This one is straight across the top, whereas this one and this one has a slight gather. So that's an option that you can decide whether you like that little gather at the top or whether you like it straight. I like ruffles and gathers, so I, um, tend to prefer these two, but I will today be making the one straight across because just to save us a little bit of time in our video. With the apron body fabric, I'm gonna take this to the pressing mat and I wanna make sure you get this oriented properly. Do you see how the long side is the top and the bottom of the apron and the what I call the short sides are on the sides? What you'll do is it's just the short sides that you're going to fold over a quarter of an inch Press all the way down like that. I'll just show you the one side. So if you're fairly new to um, sewing or crafting, you'll know what to do. Fold it over a quarter of an inch and then you'll fold it over another quarter of an inch. We'll repeat that for both sides. And that's going to secure that raw edge. That's why we fold it over twice. Okay, and I would repeat that for this side. Take this to the sewing machine, and so, man, I don't know, an eighth of an inch from that edge, really anywhere in there is fine with a coordinating thread because you will be seeing the thread. Now I did that ahead of time, so let's put this one aside, and I'll bring out the one that I finished. And that one's here. I've got a few threads, let me trim that away. And now the next step will be Let's go ahead and put that pocket on. So let me put that aside just for now and let's get that pocket fabric out. Again, that's your nine and a half by 14 inch piece of fabric. Sometimes having labels like we showed you earlier is really helpful because once you get everything cut, you're kind of like, what was that again? So that is helpful. So you're going to take your uh, pocket fabric and you'll fold it in half. That's what's going to be right here. Now notice I folded that uh, right sides together and we will go ahead and take that to the sewing machine and you're just gonna sew the two sides again. Now what I found was helpful was just to go ahead and give this a press. So I have a nice crisp edge down here. Let's take that to the sewing machine now and when I'm back, those two sides will be sewn with a quarter inch seam. I've sewn around the two sides and I went ahead and turned that pocket right side out. Um, and one thing that you can do sometimes with my scissors, not don't get 
You don't want it to cut through your fabric, but I can kind of get in those corners and kind of poke out um, so that it's nice and square. And then I pressed it, so you're at this stage. Now, go ahead and tuck that edge in, the raw edge at the top, about a quarter of an inch. And in this particular case, you're only going to fold that over the quarter of an inch one time. Whereas with the um, this piece, we folded that over twice. So let's do that all the way around. We'll keep pressing all the way around. I'll just kind of do this roughly all the way around. And then once that's all tucked in, let me just do that roughly so you see it. Let me put a little crease there. Let's pretend that was folded all the way around. You will have that folded together. Take this to your sewing machine and this edge here that will be all tucked under your quarter of an inch, you'll sew straight across about an eighth of an inch. So this will be completely closed. Once that's done, I'll take it to the next step. Now that my pocket is ready to go, let's go ahead and sew it on the main part of the apron. So I have the apron um, fabric out. Of course, these two edges, we, we sewed those down. To find the center of anything, the quickest and fastest way that I have found is just fold it in half and press it. You can certainly mark on the apron with a friction pen if you wanted to, because that is erasable. But, um, you know, the good old fashioned just turn it in half and press it works great for finding center. So I'm going to do that with the apron. And I'm going to do the same thing with the pocket. So we have center. And then as far as where to place that, of course, there's the, there's the two pr presses. So we're going to nest one fold into the other fold. So now we know we're centered. We measured down four inches um, because that seemed to be a logical place. Let me move that down just a little bit. But you can have your pocket wherever you want that. If you like your pockets a little bit lower, just put your pockets lower. Again, we did ours at four. So I'll just do that again. One, two, three, four, about right there. The other thing that we did with our pocket is it actually has two sections. So if you like to have two separate sections, you will go ahead and stitch down that little valley that we just pressed. If you don't want two sections, you would just sew the pocket on around the three sides and not put in that center um, stitch but I do like to have two separate sections. So at this point, you'll get some pins and you will just secure your pocket to your apron and sew around the three sides. Make sure you don't sew through that opening. And then if you want the two pockets, sew right down that center lane. And then when I come back, I will show you how to attach the ruffle and the waistband. Now that our pocket is sewn onto our apron, now we get to put the ruffle on. I, like I said, I love ruffles. They add a lot of femininity to our project and they're just really sweet. So you'll take your two uh, fabrics for the ruffle, actually the one fabric that's in two pieces for the ruffle, and you'll go ahead and sew those with the short ends like this and press the seam open. I've done one ahead of time, so let me show you what that's going to look like. Now this is all the different sections of it, so just stay with me step by step. Basically you're just running your stitch here and pressing that open. Now if you want to go ahead ahead of time and put a little zigzag stitch here and a little zigzag stitch along the edge, what that does is it helps the fabric to not fray in time. At least it reduces um, the amount of the fray. Of course, if you have a serger, that's the best deal you could possibly have going because then all of these raw edges are really just enclosed in, in um, the way the serger does its stitching. It's all just secured. But if you don't have that, and obviously I don't have one here with me today, you can just either leave it raw and know that when you wash it, and you don't wash aprons really, and they're almost more for decorative purposes than a practical use, but um, 
you either can leave it raw and it's going to fray a little bit in time, not a huge deal, or just do a little zigzag stitch. So run that stitch and press the seam open. That's how we got to this first part. Then, in fact, let me just go do that because it's easier for me to show you the next stage if that's just attached. Let me just quickly do that. All right. Now it's much simpler for me to show you the next step. Let's press this open, just like we have on our sample. Okay. So I want to show you the ruffle on the actual apron. It's not, it's, see how the edge is turned under? And it's just like before on the side of the apron where you fold it over a quarter and fold it over another quarter and you stitch that. So it's the same exact process for the ruffle with this edge here, folding it up the quarter, folding it up the other quarter and pressing, doing the same here and you're just going to secure that. That's how you get to this stage here. But then for the ruffle, you're going to want to set your stitch length to a long stitch or what's called the basting stitch length. And that's where the stitches are much further apart so that you can pull the threads and actually gather the material. We've run two rows of gathering uh, or basting stitches. And the reason being that the longer the, the fabric that you're trying to gather, the more um, likely that if you do just one row of gathering stitches or basting stitches, it, the thread will break. If it breaks, you're done. You have to start again. So for that reason, we came in a quarter of an inch and did our long basting stitch, came over another quarter of an inch and did another row of basting stitches so that it would just, we'd have twice the strength. Now, let me just show you, you've got a thread on the top and you've got thread on the bottom. You're going to gather, and what we did to make it simpler for you to see is we did a hot pink on the top and a white on the back. So it's the hot pink that's toward me. I'm going for those two threads. So I will grab those out and you'll begin to pull. If I can get those separated. Then we'll begin to show you how the ruffle forms. Okay, so you're gonna grab just those two hot pink ones and you're holding on to the fabric and you just begin to pull at the same time and you begin to work your ruffles down. See how that works? Now, another thing I wanna mention is that most machines, you can buy a ruffler. I love my ruffler on one of my other machines, but you don't have to get that. It's just an accessory that is available as a separate purchase um, for most machines. So you would just continue to work your ruffles down. Now before I get too carried away with making those ruffles, just like before when we found the center of the apron, I'm gonna find the center of the apron again and I'm just gonna do a quick little press. I have, I know my center of, of my ruffles because I have a seam there. So before I get too carried away, I'm going to actually pin this in place and that way this is gathered up to the midpoint and I'll repeat that so this side is gathered up to the midpoint and you're just going to work your ruffles down. You see how I did that? They just kind of slide along the threads and it takes a little bit of time and you're just going to try to spread out the ruffles so that it's even all the way across. So when I come back will be I want you to I want to show you what my ruffles look like. We'll have everything pinned very secure and then we'll actually sew it down. But I want to show you what that's going to look like before I actually sew it to the main part of the apron so that you can try to mimic that at home. I have the ruffle pinned onto the apron and I wanted to show you look how many pins I have here. Um, I've learned over the years when I put ruffles on things, just because of the nature of the fabric gathering, it's not like when you, when you place, like when you're quilting, for example, and you t place two fabrics together like this, and it's very straight and very flat. 
just because of the nature of the bumpiness, it's very easy for the fabric behind to kind of dive behind. And when you're sewing the ruffle on, you miss that. And so for that reason, I put in a lot of pins, as you can see, and I'm always checking the back to make sure that none of that fabric is diving behind and I'm going to miss it. Now, remember that we have two rows of basting or uh, ruffle, gathering ruffle stitches, whatever you want to call them. That's a quarter of an inch and then the next row over was a quarter of an inch. We're going to go over another quarter of an inch and we're going to sew a straight stitch. Now, uh, one thing that I often do when I run basting stitches is I have my stitch length on a, the longest stitch that I can. That's those nice long um, basting stitches that allow the gathering to happen. But I sometimes forget to set that back to a normal stitch length. So go ahead and make sure your, your machine's at its normal stitch length. And then you'll sew over a quarter of an inch more from the um, uh, last basting row you did, or if you want to measure over from the edge of the fabric, it's of course three quarters of an inch from the edge. So whatever you want to look at. Now as you go along, one other thing I've learned about ruffles, sometimes the presser foot wants to kind of push the fabric along and um, it kind of pu keeps pushing the ruffles ahead of the presser foot. So it's okay to kind of, this is slow. You have to take your time. Reinforce the beginning for sure, like you always would on any project. But then as you go, if, you, if you're finding it starting to push along, lift up the presser foot, get the fabric underneath there, bring the presser foot back down. Just take your time because if you let the presser foot push the ruffles along, they're all gonna be bunched up down here and it's not gonna look right. The other thing you can do with a pin is you can kind of lay the fabric flat as the presser foot is coming to it. Of course, make sure your needle's out of the way when the vertical needle's coming down. And that will too kind of keep those ruffles in place as you're stitching them down. So let's do that now. And when I come back, the ruffle will be attached to the main part of the apron. We'll press that nice and flat, and then we'll put our waistband on. The ruffle's all sewn on now, and let's look at the back side so we can see what's going on here. The way I press that is upward. So um, I want you to see that. Now you've got a choice here. Some people like to take those basting stitches out because that's not what's holding the project together at this point. Uh, my school of thought has always been, why not have more thread in the project holding it together versus removing that? Because right now it's still adding um, support even though the, what this actual seam here is, is this one up here I still just I kind of like having that kind of meat in it <laughs> I, I like having more oomph in it so I don't I don't pull my basting stitches out sometimes if they're showing um, yeah I'll absolutely pull them out but I see no reason to do that so let's go ahead and just cut that if you were gonna pull them out you just you just pull and they will literally just pull right out now at this point, you see how this is kind of floppy. I don't like that. Now another thing that you could do at this point is you could take this to your sewing machine and zigzag those two stitches together, again, to reduce fraying in the future if you don't have a serger. Um, but I'm not gonna do that at this point with you, and I don't anticipate, you know, this will be more of a home decor thing in my kitchen versus something that I'll be washing on a regular basis. So now what I'll do is take this to the sewing machine, and I wanna secure this. I don't like this floppiness. So we're going to take that to the sewing machine, and we're going to top stitch this a quarter inch from the edge, and do it again a quarter inch from that row so that it looks like this. I don't know if you can see it better on this one. So there's, it, it's decorative, yes, but it also secures all of this in the background. It kind of just sandwiches it all together so you're not, this isn't kind of flopping around. So I'll go ahead, sew the quarter inch, sew the quarter inch, and then we'll head off to get that waistband done. Now that the ruffle is sewn to the apron and we've top stitched it, let's put that aside for the moment. As I mentioned before, with the sample aprons we have, we use three of the ties cut three and a half by 21. I don't know if you can see the seam. There's one here, another one about right there, and then that's the third strip. 
If you want a longer um, tie, there's enough in a fat quarter to cut five, as I mentioned before. So that's up to you. So I'll just use the three because that's what we did with the, the aprons behind us. And as you would suspect, you'll just sew them together with the short end to the short end. So you'll just sew there, press that seam open, and do the same. Press here, press the seam open. Let me get you to that stage, and then I'll show you how to go from there. So I've sewn the three tie sections together. You will take this to your pressing mat, and let's press that, as you would suspect, right sides together all the way through and I'll just show you one end what this is going to look like pressing it all the way down of course the full length once that's pressed you're going to take this to your cutting mat and we're going to cut this just the ends at 45 and that's what we have here it's just said it is not essential but it definitely raises the cuteness factor. And it's just, it makes it look a little more sophisticated than just kind of a blunt um, straight across the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that now. This is where I love that little Omni Grip six and a half inch ruler. It's perfect for things like that. Now look at this. They've got a line, a horizontal line right here. So if I want to get an exact 45 degree, I just line that line up, uh, that line on the ruler with the line on my mat. And now this is a true 45. So isn't that great? I love that, that um, ruler for many reasons, and that's one of the other reasons they have that nice line there. You'll do that for both ends, of course. Then, notice there's three sections, section one, two, and three. Once this is pressed and you've trimmed those edges at 45, here's what you need to do next. Come in, starting here, quarter of an inch, come all the way down, now when you get to, you, you cross the line that now sends you into that second um, section of the tie. I want you to come just past that and reinforce and stop. And then leave all of that middle section open. That's important because the, the apron scoots up underneath there, if you can visualize that. Uh, I will definitely show you that in the next step, but just make sure we're not leaving just a little opening because we're going to turn this right side out. That's not what's happening here. Leave that entire middle section open. Um, so like I said, come in the first section, go just into the second section, reinforce and stop, and then pick it up just this side onto the, in the middle section, and then finish up the same way with that last section. When I come back, that will already be sewn. I will turn this right side out and we'll go to the next step. So, so for the waistband and the ties, I sewed all the way around those two sections and have turned it right side out. I used a little bit of a bamboo skewer actually to get those little corners out as best that I could. Now the, this of course, remember that whole section's open. You've got a raw edge here. I turned that under, took that to my ironed, and press that a quarter of an inch. Did that, of course, on both sides. So that's, that's what's gonna be, um, we can't have a raw edge out here. So make sure you do that quarter inch. Now, bring the apron to that opening. You can see why we leave that whole middle section open because if you don't gather your um, waistband of the, the apron right here, it needs that entire opening. So let me bring that a little closer to me. You see that little fold right there? You want this to come all the way, the top of the main apron fabric to tuck right in there, all the way up so it's completely secure. There we go. It's really important. Keep checking it. Looks good. And that's where now you'll want to pin it. So you need to decide which angle are you going to come, which side you're going to come in. I will come in from that side. So I'll go ahead and pin this. Now I normally pin vertically, but because I really want to hold, I just want more fabric in that pin. I'm going to run my pins horizontally. So this is so close to being done now. 
what you'll do to finish your uh, apron after we get this last pin in we will take this to the sewing machine now you've turned out a quarter of an inch so your top stitch will be an eighth of an inch is a great um, uh, measurement to shoot for you'll sew an eighth of an inch all the way around the entire tie don't just do this section because it you know top stitching it looks great and it kind of keeps everything from shifting around you see how these were all top stitched the entire distance so that's that's all there is to making your country kitchen apron now be sure to subscribe to youtube because there's more of the country kitchen series coming up very soon with shabby fabrics